So have you ever wanted Mega Man, but it was a bullet hell roguelike? Well, I sure didn't think I did. Honestly, who would think that? Mega Man roguelike. But when I stumbled upon Elsie, I was intrigued. The idea of combining classic platforming plus the style of the Mega Man world alongside roguelike elements we all know and love, I had to give it a try. So stick around till the end to find out if this game is worth your time. Welcome to the Roguelike Spotlight. Today we'll be going over Elsie, a game that gives a fresh take on action platformers by introducing it to bullet hell roguelikes. So let's see what a midlife crisis Mega Man game has to offer. Break it down into its main components and rate it out of 5 based on my experiences. First we'll explain what Elsie is. The game opens up with a cutscene explaining how Dr. Gray, a talented scientist who engineered a team of high-tech androids called the Guardians of the World, each with the power to prevent disasters. These Guardians have since been lost to the world due to a mysterious means that we have yet to know. After their disappearance, the world has been brought to catastrophe. In a last-ditch attempt, Dr. Gray created one more Guardian named Elsie, which we find out was in the visage of her own late daughter. Once you gain control of Elsie, your mission is to track and find the Guardians that mysteriously went missing. Armed with nothing but hints in your weapon, you must take to the world of Echis to try and find them. As you explore, you eventually find out each of the Guardians has been taken over by a malicious hack. With the true culprit still unknown, you must keep finding each Guardian to find the truth behind what happened and what their ultimate goal is. Moving from what the story is, let's talk about how the game plays. Elsie boasts a very simple to understand gameplay loop. It clearly explains itself through short tutorial rooms to make sure you know exactly how to play the game. Though this probably isn't a problem, at least not for me, you will probably want a controller for this game. It was designed for it, and like trying to put a square in a circular hole it would be a whole lot harder on the keyboard, at least in my experience. It's just better to pull out the old gamepad. Besides that, the game being a platformer has a big focus on movement, which at first is pretty rough, but that's just learning any movement in any game. You'll start by running around like a shaker with his head cut off, but after learning it's very intuitive and fun. The game has a dash and parry system, which anyone who has ever played a roguelike before thinks, ah yes, a dash, ah give me the iframes, I can't get hit, I'm invincible. Yeah, no. This thing will just get you slapped harder than you could ever think. The only way to really avoid damage is to parry it, which you could do every few seconds, and when you do it causes a slow-mo effect in a circle to appear around you, which will turn green which will allow you to trigger a counterattack to damage everything around you. Though this is the only way to deal with enemies with shield bubbles, which I will say these enemies are super annoying, but they are needed because this game may be labeled as a bullet hell, but you are the bullet hell. With upgrades you can easily send out so many bullets on the screen that you no longer know what's going on and you just hold the shoot button and walk. Also, there's a small fun mini game that sometimes comes up to get rewards that is basically the target challenge from Smash, which is kind of weird, but honestly, I kind of like it. With all that being said, the game has a very fun loop alongside a very good story that unlocks more as you play and get through more runs. It has a loop that keeps me coming back and play for hours at a time. That being said, the game by no means is perfect. Since it's released, I've noticed a few different types of bugs, ranging from audio, which I'll discuss more later, to actual game-breaking ones where you have to reset the run. Alongside that, I got soft-locked outside of unlocking one of the shops. And while it's not really that important, it's important to note. Despite all this, I had a very fun time with the game, so I'm still going to give gameplay an overall 4 out of 5, but there are some bugs that you may encounter that might cause problems in your runs. Now that we've tackled gameplay, let's move on to appreciate the visuals. As you make your way through each level, you'll be treated to a wide variety of different environments and backgrounds to explore. And I just have to say, taking some time to just look at the environments and presentation of this game, it could be quite breathtaking. Minus the areas that look like you can go into and explore, which causes a immense amount of disappointment. Oh, the levels are beautifully designed and have so much detail. The designs are all cool and interesting, it almost makes it worth dying or just going on to the next run to see the environment again. I know the first time I went to Circuit City, I was blown away. As a person who loves sci-fi world designs, I loved it. I got immediately bodied because in my opinion it's the hardest area, but damn it if I see that level I'll still go there and test my luck. I love the style of this game, though there are very, very few cases where it could be a bit misleading, and I don't know if this was just me, but when I first loaded the game and put it into full screen, it didn't 
properly stretched to my display so i didn't even see the level up notification so i never knew you could level up for the first few runs but might have just been my monitor issue so i will still give it a four out of five because i love the style of this game so much but moving from our eyes let's go to our ears and guys this soundtrack slaps the music is wonderfully made each track fitting right into the style and world of this game really pumping you up as you likely toho boss your way through this game the sound effects are also very satisfying and work amazing with each zap and whoosh and even the pre-run area just the nice sounds of the waves crashing against the wharf it's just so nice though that being said just be a little careful on just how much you are shooting because if you go a little too hard you might cause the music to just disappear Bye -bye. for a second which is a very very strange circumstance but it's happened to me about a handful of times thankfully the music always comes back but it's kind of awkward so with that in mind i love the music but i'm gonna give it a four out of five because of that weird music bug now that we experienced and possibly looked up the soundtrack to find out it's hard to find because it's a new and small game and maybe got a little sad not talking from experience let's go into the most important part of every roguelike replayability oh, and oh boy does this game keep you playing the game has a very interesting narrative though i may have heard something similar a time or two before however that being said the game leans into it way more after all you were built to find the other guardians and while this doesn't show up for debatably too many runs like literally a I got to a point where I found the first Guardian and it took about five more runs before I got word of the next one. I left me worried I got soft locked because there's one shop I couldn't unlock for some reason. Not sure if that was a bug or whatever. But suddenly you will get your first contact as you get better and unlock more in the game. Suddenly your goals shift from just unlocking things and unlocking all the shops to oh i need to find the guardians and learn what happened to them and the actual story of the game was honestly well executed to keep you coming back for more that being said you will reach the end at some point i haven't yet but i could feel it on the horizon but given the gameplay loop and how fun the game is i would still give replayability an easy four out of five very fun very replayable and it keeps you coming back for more with the replayability elsie let's talk about difficulty going into it i didn't know i could upgrade myself as i leveled up per the uh visual issue so i found myself often dying to the first boss but once i found out you could upgrade yourself and honestly just learning the movement more i started to win basically every single run so i would say it's not really that hard honestly once you get the movement down you probably could beat the game without upgrading anything with only a little bit of difficulty if you know what you're doing that being said it could still be really fun because of how ridiculous the builds can be once you get going so if you're a casual gamer it's a very fun game to get into without it being too hard but if you're more serious you can still enjoy the absurdity that comes with the builds so i think it's fair to say it's a two out of five easy to learn and master style of gameplay with difficulty out of the way well you know what's not difficult getting reviews of new and old roguelike games in your feed every friday all you gotta do is hit that subscribe button and if you're enjoying the review leave a like also after my next video i want to start doing the roguelite spotlight viewers choice Ooh. i know a lot of people have been recommending so many games they want me to look at and i want to try them all but i want to know what you all want most so leave a comment with your recommendation in the description and whatever has the highest amount of likes i'll make the review on and of course i'll give a shout out to whatever comment won only requirements are a it's a roguelike and b it's appropriate for youtube and c i haven't done a review on it before may the games begin but with that out of the way let's get back to the rating so after seven plus hours of blasting through the world of ekis from not knowing i could upgrade myself to becoming the boss of the game I found myself loving this game a lot, and while it's not very difficult, I will happily give this game a solid 4 LC upgrade symbols out of 5. Hey, that's pretty good. A very solid and honestly fun roguelike game. While it isn't hard, it has a fun loop and interesting story that keeps me wanting to keep going with the minor bugs I found. But is it worth your time, money, energy, and threat of carpal tunnel? If you like action platformers, was or are a fan of OG Mega Man games, and slash or like a storyline intertwined with your roguelike, then I would say yes. I would happily recommend it. Now this is the part where I shamelessly plug my last video. Unlike this game, if you want to see a roguelike that made me feel like I needed more, check out this video on Megaloot, a totally not gambling inventory management game.